Okay, good afternoon uh, everybody. Um, it's a great pleasure to uh, be able to speak uh, at such an important uh, conference and to address such a learned uh, uh, public. Um, it's a, a double pleasure, I've, I should say, because two of the organizing institutions are uh, represented here or headed, I should say, but uh, very uh, uh, learned uh, colleagues and, uh, and nice friends, uh, Marcef Net by Gemma Andreone and Isrim by uh, Andre Kirchner and uh, Iris kirchner Fries. Um, you can see the uh, subject of my presentation on display um, uh, on your screen. Um, I have to say, I was not very happy when I was given this uh, title. I was not very happy because uh, this is a conference about legal aspects of maritime security and offshore um, activities. And my uh, presentation is entitled uh, Offshore Activities in the EU, Maritime Security Implementation in EU Law. And uh, my unhappiness uh, had something to do with the fact that in there is not much law to talk about in this area. So, um, well, I thought uh, the organizers must think that uh, I'm very, I am a, a very good speaker if uh, I can make something out of this um, topic. So I abandoned my happiness and moved to uh, pride. And uh, uh, so I will, I'm here and I will try to make the most of, of this. Um, yes. Um, uh, what uh, I intend to uh, discuss today uh, with you uh, is of course one of the possible uh, uh, analysis of uh, uh, the, the, the topic because uh, this is a, a topic which uh, is very broad in nature. I mean if we think about offshore activities in the EU and if we think, if, even if we, if we concentrate our attention on uh, security aspects which are typical uh, uh, thereof, we are still uh, um, talking and dealing with a very broad and very large wide uh, topic. So uh, there are many uh, ways to, to handle it and of course uh, uh, in my discretion I, I decided that I propose and proposing to follow this uh, um, path, this outline. First of all, as it was already uh, rightly, very rightly pointed out, we have to uh, deal with some of the uh, terminolo terminological um, uh, issues that are implied. And this is, I think, directly linked to the identification of the exact scope of action of the European Union and of its legal system in this area, in this field. Uh, next step will be uh, the analysis of, uh, I think, the most important document which we have uh, available uh, so far in this uh, area. And uh, this is the 2014 uh, Maritime Security uh, Strategy, uh, uh, which has been uh, published uh, by the uh, Council. Uh, I will then uh, try, uh, and uh, this is where I will be moving from the policy uh, perspective to the more legal perspective and then I will try to um, uh, uh, focus very briefly of course on two uh, of the possible uh, case uh, studies, studies in the area uh, 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 talking about offshore wind energy first of all and secondly talking about uh, offshore oil and gas. Um, I have uh, uh, by a sort of footnote, uh, 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 highlighted two uh, caveats uh, uh, which uh, apply to the whole of, of my presentation. I will not uh, be dealing with international law where do you do have, as we now know, some uh, significant subst substantive um, uh, 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 provisions dealing with these, uh, with these problems. And uh, um, as I uh, anticipated, as I warned, uh, not much hard law will be touched upon uh, and why is an open question and I will try to, uh, uh, to uh, answer uh, uh, that question uh, later on. Uh, 
uh, we have already uh, seen, thanks uh, to uh, one of the previous speakers, that terminology is, uh, is uh, very important in this area in general. And I think that if we move, when we move uh, to uh, discussing the contribution or the role of the European Union and its legal system, uh, terminological uh, questions uh, 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 become of even greater importance. Because we are uh, then uh, considering an area where two, at least two different legal systems overlap. We have on the one hand uh, um, uh, 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 European Union law, which has its own uh, 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 um, terminology codes, so to speak. And on the other hand, we have uh, maritime law, uh, namely international maritime law, where uh, same terms may bear different meanings than they do in, under European Union law. So since we are really at the crossroads of these two um, uh, uh, um, bodies of, uh, of legal rules, uh, I think uh, um, uh, terminology is not only of theoretical uh, importance, but also of practical importance. If, you have, if, you, if we want to have a clear idea of what we are in fact talking about, and when we are uh, speaking about uh, maritime security, we are really meaning the same uh, thing uh, in our uh, uh, debates and discussions. So I have, I have highlighted uh, in the following slides some of the uh, 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 implications of these uh, terminology uh, 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 questions. Uh, first of all, we, we think about security under European Union law. We don't think about the sea or oceans as a first uh, 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 as a first uh, 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 target or uh, ambit. We speak about we we think we tend to think or we should think to think about the area of freedom, security and justice, which is a group, a family, a bundle of uh, European Union policies uh, dealt with by the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union. And their security in broad terms refers to um, the fight against crime um, uh, and with specific regard to uh, uh, terrorism, of course, and human trafficking, of course, and in general organized crime. So this is a, a, a field where security has a specific legal uh, meaning, uh, which is not necessarily the same that we will find in other instruments that I will uh, mention uh, later on. This is the internal perspective, but uh, security has an important and somehow different meaning when we um, speak, when we think uh, of, of the external action of the European Union. Because we uh, have this, this keyword is also uh, present in the a phrase uh, common foreign and security policy, again security. There we have a, a, another different group of uh, actions that the European Union has taken or may take in the future, uh, extending to an, uh, up to the progressive framing of a common defense that might lead in due course, perhaps, it's not sure, to a common defense. And this is dealt with by the Treaty uh, on the European Union. Um, we're talking about uh, security, maritime security, in, especially in the energy sector, in the energy sector. Um, but uh, that is again an area where security has a different meaning. Because if we speak about energy security, not uh, uh, um, freedom of security and justice, not common um, uh, uh, foreign security policy, but we're speaking about energy security, which is again something which is very relevant to our discussion today, uh, we, uh, uh, we come across a, a totally, I think, different uh, concept of uh, security according to the uh, international uh, energy uh, agency. Um, uh, energy security can be defined, as you can see from this, uh, from this slide, as the uninterrupted availability of energy sources at an affordable price. This is a, a very important concept. Uh, uh, it's a political or policy uh, uh, objective or principle. But this is not, this is not something that we uh, uh, can uh, uh, immediately associate to the other uh, concepts of 
security that I have just uh, I highlighted. So um, this is an area where we have some uh, policy documents. For example, most importantly, I think the energy security strategy of uh, the European Commission adopted uh, last year, more or less one year ago, which is aimed at ensuring a stable and abundant supply of energy for European citizens and the economy. It is based, such a strategy is based on a series of pillars, so to speak, uh, a market-based approach, uh, interconnecting capabilities should, should be maximized in order to uh, uh, minimize the uh, loss of uh, resources. Uh, there should be a diversification of suppliers, we all know about uh, Mother Russia, and uh, um, uh, uh, missing infrastructure uh, should be uh, built uh, in order to uh, 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 fill the gaps that exist in the uh, current networks. So energy, sec energy security, in a European sp perspective, is telling us well, we should have more, for example, wind farms. We should have more offshore wind farms. But if we think about the concept of security that has been discussed so far uh, throughout the morning session, um, well, that's not necessarily the case because security in that sense requires us to think beyond the need of having resources because we also have to think about how to protect uh, the infrastructures that uh, are needed for such resources uh, in case they are uh, uh, attacked or threatened by an external source. Um, uh, then we come to uh, a third, so to speak, uh, a different uh, meaning of uh, security. I can be uh, more brief in this respect because this has, be, has already been um, discussed by uh, my colleagues, my uh, other panel uh, members. Um, maritime secu uh, um, security in maritime law is a concept which is uh, strictly linked to the mandate of the International Maritime Organization, which includes, uh, among other things, also um, the duty to make travel and transport by sea as uh, safe as possible. We have already um, uh, 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 seen that uh, traditionally, and we have, uh, I think it's interesting to, to, uh, pre, uh, to highlight the fact that we heard different views on this, but traditionally there has been a distinction between maritime safety and maritime uh, security based on the uh, source to the threat, uh, uh, based on the source of the threat to navigation. Uh, 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 internal and technical, uh, according to safety, uh, as opposed to external and intentional or criminal, uh, if we think about um, security. Now, uh, I personally think that that distinction is nowadays a little blurred. Uh, among, uh, for, some for a number of reasons, one being the introduction, for example, as we have already seen, of, uh, of uh, not a safety component, it is clearly a mistake, but a security component into the uh, SOLAS uh, convention. And the S S ISPS code is clearly the most prominent uh, example. Footnote, uh, of course, this is an area where we have international law instruments, these have already been discussed. I will not dwell upon them. So um, if we try to bring all this uh, together and be before moving to uh, more substantive uh, uh, policy and legal issues, if, if we try to bring all this uh, together, uh, we, I think uh, uh, an interim conclusion that we, have, that we can reach is that, well, uh, what we mean by maritime security and the European Union law is not something that we should give for granted. I mean, explanations and clarifications in whatever domain we are uh, acting, I think are needed, not only helpful, but needed. And this uh, uh, is because uh, we are uh, uh, con confronted with a multi-dimensional problem, which is even more than a, 
a multi-faceted problem. It is a multi-dimensional because it has both internal and external implications, because uh, there is a variety of potential threats that have to be uh, fought by necessarily by different means uh, because of the, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, differences uh, between or among them. Uh, victims uh, are not, uh, it, when, when we think about the victims or potential victims of, of, of such threats, we, we should include not only the European Union itself, uh, but also individual member states because of their own individual interests, as well as uh, European citizens, uh, individuals or uh, companies, corporations. Uh, and there is another element of complexity which is uh, linked to the fact that the activities to be protected cut across a number of different economic sectors, each of, with, uh, each of them having its own uh, dedicated normative framework, transport, tourism. So to combine uh, uh, the rules that apply to such sectors with rules that are aimed at protecting, at ensuring the security uh, of that sector, of the same sector, is not, only, is not always easy, especially because of these, of these uh, differences. Um, um, as I was, uh, uh, as I, as I was anticipating, we have, we do have a, a main um, uh, uh, policy instrument to look at, and I will uh, try to um, develop a few uh, comments on it. Uh, uh, my comments are sometimes uh, 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 critical, but I think that's uh, what the good thing of having an open discussion about. Uh, what the policy makers uh, uh, um, uh, uh, deliver to us. Um, I will go, uh, I will adopt a, a bottom-up uh, mm. approach and start discussing what is at the bottom of my slide and moving up. Uh, the, the starting point is the fact that uh, the European Union and its member states are highly dependent on uh, the oceans and seas and we have uh, we know this, and uh, European institutions uh, keep on reminding us of this. This is because of uh, the economic potential. This is because of the need of new uh, jobs uh, in uh, new uh, sectors. I think there is a, a really a lot of potential. Uh, trade occurs by sea for most part. Maritime borders of the European Union are uh, uh, impressive uh, because of the length and so on and so on and so on. So uh, as it has been done uh, in other respects, for example uh, when uh, the integrated maritime policy uh, was, uh, of the EU was adopted, uh, uh, this uh, uh, maritime security strategy adopted in uh, 2014 um, tries to uh, uh, deal with the seas and the oceans in uh, what is usually uh, called a, a comprehensive manner. So uh, by abandoning the traditional piecemeal uh, approach where you would deal with transport on a, by a piece of legislation, with uh, 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 ports by another piece of legislation, by fishing by another piece of legislation and so on. Uh, so uh, highly dependence, high dependence, uh, uh, comprehensive as opposed to piecemeal approach. Uh, but then the, the end result, of course, is a document which uh, uh, expressly uh, states that um, it is aimed at uh, uh, protecting the interests of the EU and the, its member states against a plethora of risks and threats. And uh, in the global maritime domain. And this uh, plethora of risks and threats is really one of uh, my problems with, with, this, with this document because the, uh, if you try to combat uh, a number of risks or threats altogether, and these are very different one from each other, 
uh, I mean, the effectiveness of the of the of your tools are, are really, I think, uh, under discussion. Um, so uh, this is this is my point, or first of my points. Uh, can a strategy such as the one that uh, was adopted in 2014 really work when it purports, purports to uh, 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 cover such diverse areas? And I'm just uh, picking among the possibilities as threats of use of force against member states. Well, very serious problem, traditional, I would say, one. But also cross-border and organized crime. Okay, but also threats to freedom of navigation, such as the denial of access to the sea and straits, well, as well as illegal and unregulated archaeological research. I mean, I understand that the point is to uh, bring together a number of areas, uh, but the uh, output uh, is, I think, at risk itself in itself if we try to uh, govern all these very different problems and issues uh, in the same, through or via one single uh, instrument. And I see two main uh, problems with that. One uh, is a problem of uh, watering down the benefit or the merit which is implied in such a, a strategy. And the second one is that um, uh, some of these problems will be within the scope of, uh, within the competence of the European Union. Some others will fall under the competence of European uh, individual member states. And uh, uh, dealing with them uh, comprehensively may, 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 be, uh, may be problematic. Uh, what is uh, uh, sure is that this strategy is not about a new layer in itself, is not about a new layer of uh, 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 legislation. Uh, if you uh, go through the text of the uh, European Maritime Security Strategy and you try to find uh, uh, the legal, uh, its legal components or references to uh, law, be it international law or European law or domestic law, uh, as I was saying, you don't find uh, much, but what you find is a clear indication that it is not the intention of the Council to uh, uh, go for a new uh, legislative or normative instrument by itself or in itself or for the sake of it. Um, in fact, uh, Maritime security is defined by the strategy as a state of affairs uh, in the global maritime domain in which international law and national law are enforced, freedom of navigation is um, uh, uh, guaranteed, and citizens, infrastructure, transport, the environment, and marine resources are protected. So there is a, a reference to uh, legal instruments, but this is an I, in an indirect reference. I mean, the uh, strategy is purported to support the application and the enforcement of existing legal instruments, be it from the international law or European law or um, domestic law. And uh, this is, I think, reinforced by a number of references that um, are uh, uh, provided for in the um, uh, strategy, references to uh, uh, international law uh, and respect for international law, uh, human rights and democracy, and full compliance with UNCLOS, the applicable bilateral treaties where they exist and the values enshrined uh, therein. What is very, what I find very interesting is uh, a reference which is not, uh, uh, well, uh, not obvious, I think, uh, to maritime multilateralism. Uh, but it is a reference which is, uh, it is a concept which is qualified if you read the text carefully. Of course, the European Union has a problem or has had problems in the past, not, 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 not with uh, UNCLOS as a party to the Convention, but uh, with IMO uh, for sure. 
some instruments have been uh, adopted in, uh, in the recent past uh, by European legislatures that went beyond or against, depending on the view, uh, IMO instruments. And uh, the EU has been accused or criticized because of its uh, unilateral action. So here you go. Uh, uh, the European Union is saying that it will uh, 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 comply with uh, uh, multilateralism. However, uh, as I was <coughs> saying, the, the reference is qualified because it is also said that cooperation with relevant partners will be ensured while respecting the international framework and the decision-making autonomy of the European Union. So depending on the side you're on, you may see this as uh, good news or, or bad news. But I think it's a critical passage in the whole uh, strategy. Um, as you see, I'm trying to squeeze uh, uh, some uh, the harder law uh, components uh, towards the end of my presentation. And this is uh, why I have uh, uh, I, I, I will uh, end my uh, analysis of the uh, strategy by looking at the responses and then move on to see whether there is what whether the follow up may also be some new piece of uh, European uh, legislation. Uh, among the uh, five uh, areas of implementation we have uh, I have highlighted the protection of critical infrastructures. I won't go uh, through the other ones. Uh, you can see them by yourself. Uh, if uh, uh, I was asked, uh, what is the uh, strategy on maritime security all about? I would, see I would say that this is a political statement, for, for sure. Maybe more than a political framework. The framework is perhaps uh, behind the strategy. It's a way to increase the visibility of the European Union in a new area, uh, for sure. Uh, it's a support for uh, the interpretation and coordination of existing legislation mm -hmm. of various levels. But I think what I find uh, more interesting is that it's, it can also serve as a tool for monitoring potential uh, loopholes in the legislation. And this is what I will try to do in the next and final couple of slides that I have on this uh, subject. Uh, and I will, uh, this is the reason for which I have identified two uh, potential case studies, um, offshore wind energy on the one hand and uh, offshore oil and gas on the other hand. Well, there is uh, also the untold or unsaid, which is uh, uh, migration at sea. This could be also a potential case study. I didn't want to discuss this uh, today, lack of time, and need to uh, well uh, develop it more fully, perhaps. But I, I wanted to highlight that that is also a very critical uh, 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 issue. Uh, uh, one of the keywords which is used throughout the uh, strategy is solidarity. And so I think there is much room for discussing uh, uh, migration by sea under, also under the uh, maritime uh, strategy uh, uh, fra um, uh, uh, framework, which has not been uh, done to my knowledge uh, so far. Um, two case studies, very briefly, I'm, I'm coming uh, near to the end of my, uh, my time. Uh, uh, in 2008, a, 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 a document, a communication, was uh, adopted by the uh, Commission on offshore wind energy, uh, need for uh, new activity uh, in the uh, years leading to 2020. Um, um, the communication uh, uh, highlights a number of uh, challenges, uh, a number of opportunities, but perhaps because of its, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, the time at which it was adopted, it does not uh, flag out, to my understanding, any security challenge. Uh, I don't want to be the uh, Cassandra of the uh, International Conference, 
you know, about uh, mythology. But I, I learned that there is a Cassandra project uh, financed by the European <laughs> Union. So, well, that's perhaps appropriate as a, as a reference. Um, well, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to um, uh, 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 lose too much time of the, on this, but you can see that there are a number of reasons for which uh, offshore wind installations could well be the target of criminal attacks. As Professor Fakhri mentioned, uh, not everybody sees them as an environmental friendly uh, tool. Uh, if you think about the landscape, there are many groups and people who rightly or wrongly think that this is a disturbance to the environment because of the interference with the landscape, for example. So one should not rule out, Cassandra is speaking, uh, the risk of uh, uh, them becoming a potential target for uh, uh, attacks. Maybe. Uh, exactly because of their lower profile if you compare them to offshore oil and gas installations, for example. And here, here, we, come to, here we come to the last possible case study. We, uh, uh, it is well known that uh, the safety and environmental aspects of offshore uh, oil and gas have been the subject of a relatively recent piece of European legislation, Directive 2013, number 30. Um, there have been mixed reactions to the directive. Some uh, uh, commentators think it's uh, too far-reaching. Some others think it is, it is not doing enough. But what is certainly not uh, uh, achieved by the directive is a, 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 a regulation or a, 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 a coverage of uh, 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 security aspect. So one may well uh, take the view that the same reasons which were behind the need or which were perceived as a, uh, uh, behind the need for adopting an instrument on the safety of offshore oil and gas infrastructures may support uh, a possible uh, adoption of a, a, a new instrument on uh, uh, on the uh, security of such infrastructures. And you have some references on uh, through what means this could be uh, achieved, looking at the European treaties. And um, I think it's, after all, a, a political uh, question which is left to our policy uh, makers. Uh, final question mark remarks. Uh, a number of instruments exist which may potentially cover uh, maritime security when it comes to offshore uh, energy infrastructures. These are, however, in my view, and I think in the view of many of those who spoke today, by no means uh, sufficient. Uh, maybe the uh, 2014 maritime security strategy uh, may serve as an assessment exercise as to the status quo and its appropriateness uh, of the European Union legislation and in turn uh, uh, may be taken up by um, lawmakers to make sure that existing loopholes are adequately uh, filled. Uh, that's, that's it for me and thank you very much. <laughs>